Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we will learn how to set up a basic Clojure script project using Shadow CLJS and Yarn. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we will create a directory called counter, and in this directory, we will write our application. Next, we will initialize our project using yarn init. Yarn init will create package.json. Once we have this package.json, we can install different dependencies that we need in this project. So in the next step, we will create a file called shadow-clgs.edn file, and we will write a simple configuration. So this configuration is basically a closure script map. A, a map and it has key value pairs. Now let's go through these key value pairs one by one. First we have source path and source path has a value of a vector of one element which is the string of source. So the source directory is where you put your source code or your application code. Next is the dependencies. It has a value of vectors, nested vectors actually, and this is where you put all of your Closure script dependencies such as reagent, reframe, and so on. Next, we have nREPL, and this is where you specify the port to start the REPL when you start your development server. Next, we have dev HTTP. So, this tells Shadow CLJS to serve the folder public on port 7777. So, the public directory will contain all of our HTML, the compile.js and the CSS code, and we will create this very shortly. And the last but not least is the builds. And this is where you specify the build configuration. And let's go through the build configuration one by one. When you are writing a Shadow CLJS application, you can have one or many build configurations. And in this example, we have one configuration. In our app, consists of a single build with an ID of app. Each build describes artifacts the compiler will build. So build is basically an instruction to Shadow CLJS specifying how we want to compile our closure script code. So we have given five different properties in our build. Let's go through them one by one. First is the target. Target we have given a value of browser. Since we are writing application for the browser, hence the target is browser. Next is modules. Module specifies the modules that we want to generate. Basically, the, the files, the JavaScript files we want to generate. And we also have a, a keyword called main. So this means that the output, the compiled JavaScript file will be called main.js. And inside the main, we have a key called init function. The init function specifies the main function or the entry function of the entire program. In our case, the init function is inside the app.core namespace. Next, we have output-dir. This is short for output directory. This is where our compiled JavaScript file gets saved. In our example, it gets saved like so. In our example, it gets saved in the in the public directory and inside that we have a directory called js and inside the js directory we the main.js gets saved last we have asset path and asset path we have a value of slash js and we have to write this because in order for our hot code reloading to work properly next let's create our public directory in this directory we will create index.html and inside the body we will write a script tag and source will be the compiled JavaScript file located in JS directory. We have also added a div with an ID of app. And this is needed when we are writing our single page application using reagent. Next, we will create our source directory. Inside, we will create our root namespace directory called app. Inside app folder, we'll create core.cl.js. So whenever you write a closure script application, the first step is to declare the namespace. Namespace can be declared with NS macro. Once we have declared our namespace, we will define two functions called start and init. Start function basically calls the native JavaScript console.log function, and init function calls the start function. The dev after load meta in start tells Shadow CLJS that this function needs to be called every single time the file gets saved. By adding this tag, 
By adding this meta tag, you are enabling hard code reloading development in your application. Now that was super easy, right? You just add one meta tag and voila, the hard code reloading just works. So the next we have is init. Init is the entry point of our application. This is the function that gets run when our development server starts. And this is also the function that gets compiled into JavaScript code. Init is the entry point of our application, which we specified in our Shadow CLJS build. Next step is to install our dependencies. First, we will install Shadow CLJS as a dev dependency. Next, we will install React and React DOM, and this is needed by Reagent. Next, let's start our client server by running npx shadow CLGS watch app. Now, app is the ID that we specified in our shadow CLGS.edn file. Now, this script will install CLGS dependencies, compile our closure script to JavaScript, start a REPL server, as well as the client server. Once the file is compiled, we can go to port 7777, and if you open our developer tools, we should see hello CLGS printed on the console. Let's try to see if hot code reloading works. Let's change the string in our start function. And there you go. The browser immediately printed the new string. This means that everything is working as expected. This is awesome. We have finally written our first closure script application for the browser. So in this video you learned a lot of things. First you learned how to you learned how easy it is to set up a closure script project using Shadow CLGS. You also learned the basics of Shadow CLGS, learned how to configure Shadow CLGS.edn and learned how simple it actually is. You also learn about running your first Shadow CLGS script in development environment. Learn about the Shadow CLGS watch script, which does a lot of things such as code compilation, installing dependencies, and starting REPL and client server. You also wrote your first closure script code using native JavaScript console log. And you also learn how to start your own closure script server. We also learned about how hot code reloading works in Shadow CLGS and how easy it was to set up. So in the next video, we will go ahead and start writing our reagent application. We will also see how REPL works when we are building our application. So see you then.